Is Longchamp a luxury brand when it comes to leather bags? All of us seen this very popular bag being carried around everywhere. La Pliage is the name of the bag that is the first thing comes to mind when you mention Longchamp. This French fashion house is an interesting case out of all brands I studied so far. I visited their stores, checked most of their products, and did a good research to understand the history of the brand. But I'm still having difficulty categorizing this brand in the luxury category. The prices are on the lower end with Coach and Kate Spade, yet the leathers and quality is quite nice at first glance. Design appeal may change from person to person, and the shopping experience in store doesn't compare to a traditional luxury brand. Today, the term luxury may only mean it's exclusive just because it's expensive. And the brands in that category serves their customers to show around that they can splurge on things that doesn't really worth that much. In this definition, quality may or may not be in the picture, yet most of those expensive brands are considered as luxury by many. But I would like to think the true luxury lies in the materials, design, and the craftsmanship. The price is not relevant of the matter. So if I evaluate what I saw from Longchamp so far, it has a good standing for a luxury brand in all those ends. Yet still, even I feel confused coming from the lower price points and the shopping experience in their stores. So even though I'm not a huge fan of expensive luxury labels, my brain is trying to reject the luxury categorization when not presented with this illusory designs around the logo. Very tricky. Longchamp was one of the brands I was personally curious about for a long time. I have stopped by at their Champs-Élysées store in Paris. The shopping experience felt a bit too salesy. Very different from the next door LV where the SA don't even look at you unless you ask for help. So that part took away a bit of that illusory luxury, but most of the leathers they used in their bags felt amazing. The designs were a mix. Some I really liked, clean, timeless and minimal, yet some looked rushed, cheap and could be found in a backstreet bazaar style. I have purchased this half moon shaped hobo bag in suede to do a dissection to understand the quality a bit more with you all here. But before we go there, I would like to share a few things I found interesting about the brand. Longchamp was started in 1948 by Jean Cassegrain who took over his father's tobacco shop in Paris. In 1950, John came up with the first luxury leather wrap pipes. It became a huge hit. Even the names like Elvis Presley was a fan. With this success found messing with leather, brand entered into small leather goods category making wallets and travel accessories and then launched their first woman's handbag collection in the late 70s. Since then, Longchamp accomplished a great deal of success globally. Especially their iconic design of Le Pliage, the foldable nylon bag, made them a household name around the world. Today, they have a presence in 80 countries over 1500 stores. Even though they are known with that signature nylon bag, they seem to have pretty good leather bags. To my surprise, the brand is still owned and managed by the family. Currently, the third generation is in charge of the brand. And impressively, they still produce most of their products in their own workshops in France. At their price point, this is very promising and hard thing to pull off. We will see how much of that French know-how is in this bag once we open it up. At first glance, it seems like above average craftsmanship. The only thing sticks out is these little cleaning mishaps on the thread ends. Otherwise, it seems like it's put together in a cleaner way from the outside. As we open up this bag, we see materials used inside is medium to above medium level. It doesn't match to the level of highs and luxury products. They're more budget-friendly choices, but from the making and cleaning side of things in the internal side of this bag, nothing sticking out as a problem. It's just a little bit of a budget-friendly and rushed approach, which is very normal at this price point. The only hardware on the bag seems pretty good. It has substance. It's a typical Zamak alloy but the coating looks fine. I think uh, definitely above average of its price point. And the zippers they used is YKK. It runs pretty smooth. I don't have any complaints on those ends either. So the main body of the bag is made out of suede leather. Suede is the lower part of the cow height, which doesn't have a grain. It doesn't have a finish. So we didn't apply acetone to see anything. It's already visible. The beauty of a suede comes from the fineness of its fibers. The more finer fiber structure, the better riding effect you get here, reminding you velvet is 
a better considered suede. This one is a medium level suede in my experience. One warning about the suede leather bags is that it's extremely porous. There is no coverage or protection on these things. It will absorb whatever you pour on it. So it's very easy to get dirty, incredibly hard to clean up. So be very careful if you get a suede bag, no matter from what brand. As we apply acetone to the sheepskin used on the trim side of this bag, I see a minimal finish pigment on a medium, above medium level sheepskin. I love to see the varying grain of this leather. It's nothing to complain about again, above average selection. I'm quite happy at the price point we're looking at. I think three square foot of leather will be enough to cover a project of this size. My estimate for leather is about $10 putting it back together like this, including hardware in China, around $35. This bag shouldn't cost to make more than $45 in leather, labor, and hardware. The small hobo bag is retailed at $385 today on their website, but I can't see the same suede option there. I see full grain leather, which will be a bit more costly to produce, though not too much of a difference. Mine was on sale in store. I paid $225 for this one. Given my estimate of $45 to make this bag in China, it seems like a very good price. But the original price of $385 for this bag has a bit more premium. Here my theory is brand still produces half of their bags in France and I'm assuming their pricing is based on their French production. So a full grain version of this bag made in France probably costs somewhere between 70 and $75 to make and that $385 is a good price, still very fair price given those circumstances for that version of the same exact design. Based on this review, I understand that Longchamp is trying to produce as many bags as they can in France while trying to lower the overall cost of production by outsourcing some of the production to China. I think the brand offers a good value for the leather enthusiast. Given their globally known name, the family still kept their prices at a reasonable point instead of going the Parisian luxury label style. I truly appreciate the service to the leather community especially given their large network of physical stores, enabling us to go in and check the bags before we can purchase them. I hope you found this video helpful or at least entertaining. As always, until next time, stay leather tamed.